Hey friends, thank you so much for dropping by. I am Patrick God and welcome to another Blazor tutorial, a quick and basic Blazor WebAssembly tutorial to be more exact. It's about the local storage. So how to use the local storage in Blazor WebAssembly. There are actually two ways I wanna show you. The first one is using the JavaScript runtime. Yes, you would have to write a little teeny tiny bit of JavaScript with that way. And the other one is we use the beautiful library of Chris Sainty by Chris Sainty made with made by Chris Sainty you know what I mean it's uh, called blazer 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 the local storage beautiful stuff kudos to Chris Sainty for that and it already got two million downloads on NuGet so maybe this is the better option but either way I will first show you the JavaScript runtime and then the other beautiful way with a couple of more options you've got there so I would say we just start but before if you learn something I would really appreciate it if you click the like button maybe even subscribe to my channel for more tutorials like this one here and if you want this stuff earlier in your inbox so early access to these youtube videos and also early access to upcoming online courses then maybe the newsletter is something for you i promise i won't spam you at max at most i send an email once a week so maybe you want to check that out thank you very much and now enjoy the tutorial all right here we are i just created a default blazer web assembly project with dotnet 6 we are here in visual studio 2022 version 17.3.1 and uh, I changed nothing, really nothing so far. This is the counter page, already run this application, started it, and uh, there it is. You've got your counter, I think you know that. You can click this button and the count counter increases. Now what I wanna do is I wanna store this in the local storage, so the current count. And again, the first way to do that would be the the JS runtime and then the JavaScript function, local storage, set item to set the count and, and then also get item to get the current count. So the easiest way then would be on the counter page here, we just inject the uh, JS or runtime, the IJS runtime interface is used here. And uh, yeah, we call this JS for instance. And then we have to make some changes here in the increment count method because what I wanna do is now again, I wanna set the current count value. And now for that, we call the invoke void async method of the JS runtime. It's an asynchronous method. So if we really wanna use the asynchronous one, then we change the return type here as well. That's now an async task method, an asynchronous method returning a task. And now here we say await JS and then invoke void async. And now you can enter any JavaScript method here you want. There are of course, couple of built-in uh, JavaScript methods you can already use like local storage set item or if you wanna write your own JavaScript code, I know you're using Blazor here because we don't want to use JavaScript, but if you, for whatever reason, have to use it, then uh, I, uh, well, I would recommend you do that here. For instance, in the index HTML, um, you add a script block like this one here and then add your JavaScript code there. And then you can also, use this uh, method here then. But this is for another tutorial. Now here we just use the local storage with the uh, method set item, no parenthesis whatsoever. And as you can see here, we can now add a list of arguments. And this is what we will do because we call this item count. And then the value we wanna store here is the current count, right? This thing here and that's already it. So let's just save that and we get an error again. I have no idea why. Jesus, unable to start without debugging. Okay, let's just stop everything. This is interesting. Again, Visual Studio wins. So Visual Studio one, Patrick zero, but let's just try that again. And I hope that it now works. I think this is the such a basic tutorial and still we get some issues here with uh, with Visual Studio. All right. Anyways, let's just open the console. We click the button and now let's have a look at the application. Yeah, I think, did it work? No, 
that's not the current version. Let's just do restart the application again. And refresh this thing here as well. We hit click me, refresh, and now it works. All right, this is awesome. But I will just leave this in here because with that you see how beautiful Visual Studio 2022 works sometimes. It was it was really bad when they released it, I think. And actually it, 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 it was getting better, but oh my gosh, the latest updates, maybe it's because of all the new features regarding .NET Maui, for instance, because this was available a couple of, days, I think, before only in the preview edition of Visual Studio 2022, and now they added it to the released version. Well, anyways, that's again another topic. But what we see here now is you can click this button and then we refresh the local storage, and this is now the current count value, right? Again, basic stuff, and now it finally works. So that's how that would work. And uh, now we also want to get this item, right? We want to display it with an alert or on the page or just in the console. So let's use the console here. First, we need another method. So let's add one, for instance, private async task. And we call this get count now, pretty simple. And here now we just say bar local storage count is again await js and now we say invoke async see that not the invoke void async it's this time invoke async because we want to return something and in our case let's just use a string here the method we want to use is local storage get item this time and the name of the item again is count and then here we can just, just say <laughs> console write line and then we say current count is the local storage count. All right, and we format everything, save everything, restart the app. Maybe it worked now out of the box. There's our application and we forgot to add the button. So let's just add the button real quick. Call this get count such a, such a basic tutorial and so, so many things can go wrong well that's how developing looks like sometimes right so get count is the button with the function and this label here now we get our button and now drum rolls get count yay we see current count 13 and important to note you see it here here, the current count is still zero because we, well, we rebuilt the application, restarted it, but in our local storage, we still see the 13. When we now overwrite this, of course, it's six. And now in the console, we see also six. All right, that's, and that's my phone. Let's just turn it off. And now we will use Blazor local storage, the library, the package, the NuGet package. Um, made by Chris Sainty. All right, so this is another option to do that. You can already see it here on GitHub, for instance. Just Google for it, and then you see Blazor local storage. And you can do lots of stuff with that, actually, but we just use the basic stuff here as well. So I would say we just add the NuGet package, register it, and then use it real quick. So and to just be absolutely sure it hopefully works, we stop the application and now right click the project file, manage NuGet packages. And now here we search for local storage and that's already the one, a library to provide access to local storage in Blazor applications. And you see over 2 million downloads, well deserved. So let's install this. And then we have to register this thing. So we go to the program CS, and you can also look this up here on the GitHub page. For instance, here it says installing. We could also, of course, use the .NET add package command. But here, regarding the setup in our program CS file now, we just say builder services, and then add blazard local storage and we need the using directive here using blazard local storage and that's actually it already but what i like to do is also in the uh, import tracer 
we just add the other using blazard local blazard and then local storage so we don't have to use the complete namespace when we want to inject this thing so we have our program cs file here also the imports razor if you want and now in our counter page we again inject this with i local storage there's also a syn synchronous one so if you for whatever reason have to use a synchronous uh, method then you can use the sync local storage service but we just use the local storage service call this local storage for instance and now down here we just say await and then local storage set item async and then again we call this one count and we want to use the current count and let's just remove this or comment this line out and here actually it's exactly the same thing so let's just copy this comment it out and now in here we say await and then a local storage get item also string and then only the item name called count and again that's it. So let's just save that. Quick recap, we inject the local storage service and then we write await local storage set item async and that's our count item now, the name of the item and the value. And then here again, we use local storage and then get item async and again the name and then rewrite that into the console. So let's try to run this one more time and where is it is it that one or that one i think it's that one Let's just refresh this and now we try to overwrite this number worked and now we try to get the number and this works as well and again when we refresh the page get the count it's still 17. all right that's it already. This is how you use the local storage with a Blazor WebAssembly application in .NET 6. That's it. As always, you get the code down there in the video description on a GitHub local storage with the JS runtime and also with Chris Sainty's Blazor local storage package. What is your preferred way? Please tell me in the comment section. That would be interesting. Do you want to use the, the native JavaScript code or do you want to use Chris Sainty's library? Would be really interesting to know that. So thank you very much already and if you learned something and like this video i would really appreciate it if you click the like button maybe subscribe to my channel thank you so much for that and don't forget the newsletter for upcoming videos and upcoming online courses again at most i send an email once a week so i won't spam you promise you that and uh, i'd really appreciate it if you just well subscribe to my newsletter and last thing maybe you want to hang out some more then check out these videos here on the side for more tutorials about dotnet 6 and uh, in the future also .NET 7 and 8 and so on and uh, also Blazor WebAssembly stuff. Would love to see you here hanging out on my channel. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for your time and I hope I see you next time. Take care.